Hi, welcome to Learning Flutter. So in this second video, I want to start a set of videos on something called the block pattern, B-L-O-C. Why would you want a new pattern or why should it be a new pattern in Flutter when people have been writing code for a while and probably came up with a number of patterns, like the model view pattern, for example, where you separate your view, your model, and the controller, MVC. So why a new pattern? Well, there are a couple of nice things about this block pattern that I really like and I've been learning it and I sort of want to show it to you. Now, I think that it might even be possible to use this block pattern in other programming languages. And I've seen somewhere that one reason that Google likes this is because it is not tied specifically to Flutter, it's platform independent. We're gonna put that to the test later. But for us to understand the block pattern in Flutter, we also need to understand why you would need a block pattern or some pattern to manage your data. And that's what a block pattern does is it's your state control, managing all the state for your application. Now, before we even talk about a block pattern, we need to understand stateless widgets and stateful widgets and differentiate between them. But we can't get into talking about stateful widgets and stateless widget until we sort of understand a little bit more about Flutter and the language it uses, which is Dart. So I figure let's start with some simple Dart only code understand some of the features of Dart, see how Flutter builds on those features, and then we'll get into the block pattern. So here you go. So this very first part one is looking at something called streams. So what are streams? So I figured to first to get into streams, let's just play with it and see where we land. So I'll create a directory from which we will start playing with streams. So here is our Visual Studio Code editor. I don't have any code yet. So like I said, we should probably start understanding a little bit more about the language that Flutter uses. So let's start with a simple exercise. And for this, we'll create a main.dart file. Now, what does Dart code look like? Well, one of the things that you can do with Dart is just write standalone Dart application that you can run just like you write Go or C or C++. It doesn't necessarily have to be like visual stuff like we do with Flutter. So let's write the simplest Flutter Hello World application. And that's it. Now, notice we didn't have to say void main. We didn't have to say that we're accepting any parameter. We didn't have to import anything. And neither do you have to declare that this bit code belongs to any sort of package, even though Flutter supports packages. So we're not gonna get there yet. So let's just stick with this. So the easiest way to run this is to run it from the command line. You can do that by opening up a terminal. Of course, we can go back to the terminal that we had, or you can open up a terminal within Visual Studio Code, and we can say dart and exercise one and main that dart, and that runs our code. There it is. We have written some code that can run on your desktop. So now that we have our simplest program, let's extend this and see if we can create a stream. So what is a stream? A stream in Dart is built into the language using the async library. But if you're using Dart 2, well, it sort of puts some features and some of that streaming stuff in the core. So you don't have to import the library, but we will see. And basically what a stream is, is this abstraction over how you can do asynchronous programming. If you come in from Golang, a stream is like a channel. Think of it like a pipe where you can register for events that are coming out of that stream. The stream represent the end of that pipe where the events are coming out, and therefore you can register to have, to be called for those events. Now, this doesn't make sense until I show you. So let's do that. So I haven't quite created a stream yet. What I've done is I added yet another function, and this function takes a parameter. I haven't specified what type the parameter is. I'm leaving that out for now. And that's one of the things that Dart allows you to do. As you can see, it says that the, the type of this parameter is going to be dynamic, which will means it will be determined at runtime and depending on what we pass in. But what Dart has is the ability for you to do string interpolation. And people who come from like Unix and so on would understand what this means is simply being able to evaluate a variable within a string. Or if you come from a language like Groovy, 
this is all part and parcel of the same thing or even something like Python allow you to do something similar. So the difference here with Dart is single quote and double quote means the exact same thing. So this means that though we can now call this function by doing this, we can ask our handle event function to say hello for us. This is nothing more than just delegating our call instead of calling print ourselves. So let's see what this look like. All right, so we see that how we have um, essentially the same output. All right, so let's take this up a notch now and see if we can create a stream on which we can register. For reference, all the documentation about the stream class can be found here. And of course, you can learn about the Dart async library. And there are other things, there are features, streams, and other things. So anyway, let's continue. One of the ways you can create a stream is by saying that you want to register for events that are coming out of that stream. So we can do something like this. And notice all we've done is declare that source is a stream. We don't actually have a valid object. And we know this because let's say we try to register for the events on this stream. So if we look at the signature of the listen function method for our stream object, we'll see that our listen takes a parameter called onData which is a function that returns nothing but takes a dynamic parameter. Now, the reason why this is dynamic is because we have not specified what type of data we're going to be getting or getting out of our stream. If we set it out, for example, we we're going to be getting int values out of our stream. Then when we look at the documentation, we'll see that how this says, oh, um, our listen function here expects a function that takes an int and of course return nothing. And then there's some other functions that we'll get to later. But for now, we'll leave this as an int and we'll simply pass that to pass our handle event as our handle function or on data. So notice I don't have an error and so this is fine. Well, let's run our code now and see what happens. And you can see we have an exception and that is because we're trying to call listen on a null. Okay, we did not actually create a valid object. We just simply declare a variable called source and it's empty. So one of the things we can do is then assign a valid stream and then we should be able to register for it. So let's register, let's create a valid stream. One way you can create a valid stream is to look at the constructors that are available for the stream class. So if you look at the documentation, you see that you can create a number of different types of stream. And so you can create an empty stream, you can create an event transform, you can create a future stream, blah, 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 and the list goes on. So sure, we can create an empty stream. So let's do that. And we'll see that if we rerun our code, so let's clear our screen, we run our code, notice we don't have an error now, but we don't have any event either because we have an empty stream. We did not put anything into our stream. So let's create a stream that actually does something. I know it's taking a long time to work up to this, but I find that oh, if we build slowly, at least you can understand where we're coming from. And then when we get there, it's easy to stitch everything together. So one type of stream that we can build is a stream that is periodic. And let me show you that. So here you can see there's this periodic stream and the periodic stream takes a duration and basically is just a object that describe time, how often something should happen. We'll use a duration class to create a duration. So let's do that. And so some of the parameters for duration class is like minutes, hours, and seconds. So let's use seconds and we'll say let every two seconds, for example, we want our stream to emit a value. We should expect that this handle function should get an event every two seconds. So let's see. And so we waited two seconds and there we go. Um, we're getting some events. Now that first hello, um, let's stop our program and get rid of the first hello because that's from this call. So we just do control C to terminate. And so let's get rid of this. We no longer need that. And so notice though that we're getting an event every two seconds. That's good that we can call something every two seconds, but we don't actually have a value, but this is perfect for if you want to implement something like a clock, because you can say, give me an event every second, and then you can just 
paint in the t- the current time or whatever it is um without the stream itself having to send you the time it can just be the thing that is triggering you every second but we want to be able to do something more funky than that and so if you look at the uh, signature for the periodic stream you'll see that not only does it take an event but it also takes a computation function and the computation function is just a function that returns an int that's because that's the type of a stream if you want your computation function to return anything then just make the parameter type for our stream dynamic or don't specify anything and it accept an int and so if you read this it says the event values are computed by invoking the computation function the argument to this this callback is an integer which starts with zero and it's incremented for every event okay if this is omitted then you get a null value which is exactly what we were getting so what we should do then is find a way to have a computation function so let's do that so in this example i want my stream to generate some values so let's create a list of values and this is where you create a list in dart you can say that all oh, the type of the thing is a list there's actually a list but notice how we're creating a dynamic list because we're not specifying what type of values are going to be in this list and we can mix and match if we want to be able to return anything else then we should leave this off we can make this dynamic or simply just not specify it and then now we can create a list like this and so we sort of have a mixed list here with some int some floating point value a string and so on and we can now say that let's have a compute function. Now, compute function we know must take an int, and each time it's called, it must return a value. So, and so that's pretty straightforward. Our compute function takes an int i, which we know that's all we can do here, and so that's fine. We pass it the period. We say this is our compute function, which means calls this each time because it spit out a value, and this guy will take the current value of the iteration it's called on. And so if that is less than the length of our list, then we should return something from the list. Once we exhaust our list, what should we do? So we could return something like null or no more elements, something like that. Let's run this and see. So we wait two seconds and we start getting events and we get two, three, 3.14, then hello world, then nine, then more stuff here. And then we should start seeing nothing more to send. And then, of course, our stream is still going. We haven't done anything to actually stop the stream once we got here. So this is passing in some increasing value of i, and we're still returning values. So let's stop this. So what we would like is some way to be able to say that, you know what, I want to stop sending values at the end of the stream. And so one way we can do this is look at when we listen to a stream. We can specify that we have an error function. We can also specify a done function on done. And so let's register an um, error function, done function, cancel on error. So specify the on error function and the error function if we put our mouse over this we can see error function is a function that takes a error value hopefully this is not too much i was going slow by showing you the slow build up but i think by now i can sort of increase the pace a little bit so i'm adding several parameter and if you don't know dart all it means is that we can do name parameters so this is what you see we're doing here if we look here you can see what happens is the first parameter is required. And so this is the parameter, it's called onData. And what type is it? It's a function that returns nothing. This curly braces means that oh, the other parameters are optional, but they're not only optional, but their name. And so what are their names? Well, it's the parameter name. And so because you put in this like map, well, then you can specify them in any order you like. So it doesn't have to be in that order, but you can name the parameters and give them a value. 
So on error function will do that. And then the last parameter is uh, if there's an error, if it should cancel. So let's see which, how do we trigger our done function or our error function. So one thing we can do is we can see if we don't have any more messages, instead of returning a value because we're gonna keep getting call, is we could throw an exception. And so if we throw an exception, and I'll assume that we just wanna throw the string that says nothing more to send, so maybe I should make this a little bit faster so we don't have to wait so long for the last value. So I'll take out a few value probably. So then what happens now? Oh, look at that. There was an error on the stream. And so we did not see the last message that we sent nothing more to send because even if that was passed to our function here, we did not print it out. So if we want, we can print it out like error like this, okay? And notice our function will call and because we have cancel on error, our stream was canceled. Now, if we make this false or we didn't specify it, we will still get keep getting call and we will instead see our repeated error message. So if I rerun the code, notice because we did not cancel an error, we still get an error, but we see our message. So we can at least get the message. Okay, so let's kill our code now. And how do we say that how we're done? So we know how to simulate an error and how to um, even cancel the stream on an error by putting true and we can get that error message but how do we say we're done so if we look again at the listen we'll see that how it returns a value it returns a stream subscription so one of the things we can do is save our screen stream subscription try saying that 10 times fast and the reason why i'm not making it a variable local to main is because i want to be able to call it within this function and right now it's null, but it's gonna be a sign of value here when we register. Then when we get to the end and we have nothing else to send, we can say ss.cancel. And the reason why we're getting an error here is because it doesn't know where this class is defined. Now I said by default, most of the things that are defined for Dart async is now included in core, so you don't have to import it. But for this particular class, we need to import Dart sync. Let's run our code and see if we'll see the done message. So we got an event and there's more stuff here. And after that, there was nothing else. And so we cancel um, because we cancel we were able to remove ourselves from getting any more event, but we did not see that done. It's really interesting to see that we were able to take a list of values and turn it into a stream. You can take this list of value and turn it to a stream in another way. If you look at the stream function, the stream, and there's from iterable as one of the constructors that you can use. And if you use from iterable, then we can do this. And so if we run this now, you see your values are printed much faster, but notice that done function is call because it is clear to the stream, once you create a stream from an iterable, when it's at the end of the stream and it calls your done function. So two ways you've seen how to create a stream. Well, I saw three ways. We created an empty stream and we really couldn't do anything with it. We created a stream that is periodic and then we were able to call our compute function and that give us the data that we put in the stream and then we were able to create a stream from an iterable. In the next video, we'll look at how we can create streams from something called a stream controller. With a stream controller, we have a little bit more. So what does the stream controller do? It gives us a little bit more control in terms of how we can add values to our stream. In the example I've shown here, we really didn't have too much control. We had to have a iterable first that we could create a stream from, or we had to use a compute function. In other examples or in other case places or code, we might want to be just be able to add an event to the stream based on user action or something. And that is what we're gonna see next. Take care, see you in the next video, bye.